Uh, welcome, everyone. It's nice to have a different time slot where we can uh, not have people in the East Coast falling asleep halfway through the class because it's approaching midnight. Um, uh, I want to introduce, um, it's weird because I'm looking at the reflection and so everyone's on a different side. So I'm like, and, and this is Chris, actually, no, this is Sam. And this is Chris. Um, and they're phenomenally talented physical practitioners as well as diagnosticians. So we're going to have a lot of fun tonight working through a number of fun sequences. And we want to start off by just making sure that the area around us is clear of obstacles where we will make sure that we don't have water bottles or anything else that would impact us on the way to the ground. If you're set up near furniture or a corner of a room, that's something we want to make sure that we have already navigated around so that if we're coming to the ground, we know that we're not going to come into contact with any of those things on the way down. Make sense? Rad. Um, uh, any questions before we get started? All right, we have a short amount of time, so we're going to be going through material relatively quickly. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free, of course, to take time and ask them, and we'll make sure that we get them answered. But uh, for now and for the weeks ahead, as best you can, come to class warmed up. We're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time warming up. So if we start to move into something that doesn't feel like you're ready for it yet because you're not warming up for it, take time to warm up first and then work in partnership with whatever it is that we're asking you all to do. Uh, you all ready? Cool. All right, our first exercise, what's our first exercise? TikToks. We're gonna do some TikToks. So we're gonna go from an inside star to an inside star through a straddle bat. And we're gonna look at this from a particular perspective. We wanna make sure that as we're mounting into this, that we are doing so without overstressing the bases or the flyer's leg. So looking at the space between the flyer's foot and the base's hip wants to not be so close that it crumbles the base's leg and not so far away that we can't quite reach our partners, but just at an appropriate length so that when the base bends the leg, it brings the flyer over center. As we come through these TikToks, we want to make sure that we hit this moment in our side star position with our torso parallel to the ground and just at least establish that as a moment and then down. And we'll do this a couple of times on each side as our warm up. If you are very familiar with this and you want, you can play with doing this with just a single arm. You would switch that arm halfway and straddle back to the second arm. And you can do this either with the easy arm or the complicated arm. So go ahead, take a moment and work through some TikToks. We'll establish our perimeter and make sure that we have a safe area that we can come to the ground on. And we will establish our timing within our partnerships. Three, two, one. And most of us have already gone, but go. Yeah. These first few exercises that we're going to do are relatively routine. Um, I'm familiar with most of your practices, so I don't anticipate a ton of questions. But please feel encouraged to ask questions, even if it's a nuanced thing on something that you've done hundreds of times. And you're like, ah, it's a little bit funky in this particular moment. Ask the question, get the answer. Let's make our practices smoother and smoother and smoother. Uh, just to establish working in partnership without a spotter, we're going to do a few rounds of some walkovers. The walkovers that we're going to do are just from shoulder stand. We're going to just look at being able to come to the ground over the base's head by going past our vertical balance a bit and coming out safely. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. So they'll come into a shoulder stand from their front plank position. They're going to do a walk over the base's head. From there, you're going to find a little bit of rotation and do the same walk over. And you can do that at a few angles, just establishing our perimeter, knowing that if we're going to come to the ground, that we can do that safely. If this feels like that is something that doesn't feel safe for you because you don't have experience enough in shoulder stance or walkovers, Please don't pretend that, uh, that you can. Make sure that that's something that you uh, don't participate in if you don't feel like you can do it safely. Um, if you don't feel like you can do it safely, I want you to just stay in a shoulder stand and go through a range of motion that is balanceable rather than a range of motion that goes all the way over to the ground. Does that make sense, everyone? 
Thumbs up if that makes sense. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Give it a shot. Um, next, we're going to do a very similar exercise. We're going to do these walkovers, this time from STAR. In the STAR walkovers, you can take it as a moment of conditioning also. I, there's a lot of people in this room that have pretty uh, advanced practices. So for those of you that already have practice jumping backwards into STAR, you can play with that as a part of this also. Uh, after you come to the ground, you can re-enter that way. So we'll show that a couple of times. And, and then we'll show it in a in an easier way for those of us that would like a little bit more support. So initially, we'll come into our star, and we're just going to overbalance it and go too far back. I am going to pull with my arms and protect my shoulders as I do that, and then the base will bend the legs to help the flyer reach the ground. For those of you that have a good jump and practice already doing this, I'm not going to go over the technique for doing it. So only if you already have the technique for it, you can go backwards into your star and then out again. And you can play with, with those entrances to do some conditioning in addition to learning the perimeter around you. For those of us that feel like, oh, that's going to be a little bit much on my back, we can always have the base step one foot to the sacrum as this is coming down. And, and support this as we're uh, potentially gonna stress out the back. And, and then the base can also take and direct the flyer to the ground at different angles with that connection. If you are playing with that variation, oh, don't kick your base in the head, number one. And uh, number two, you can, Take a moment when the foot comes to the sacrum to potentially release the hand grip. Even if you don't let go completely, you can soften it and see if you can balance just with one foot on the shoulder and one foot on the sacrum. As part of your walkover. So any of those variations that work for you to do some star walkovers, uh, completely free of the foot entrance on either side, all types of variations, but please make smart decisions about what works right for you and your partners today uh, without a spotter, with as much calibration as we've done, as much calibration as you've done over the last who knows how many days. Be conservative, work on variations that feel appropriate for the two of you. Sound good? Three, two, one. Um, I promise you in another class, we will work on the technique just for that jump backwards into star. Uh, it's a really fun class that has a bunch of different variations that we'll play with in one of the upcoming weeks and everyone will become champs at that backwards jump into star through it. Uh, for now, we're going to go from a... We're going to just mount into a front plank on hands. A uh, front plank on hands with the uh, range of motion, yeah? yeah. All right. Can you show them your hips close up there real quick? Uh, yeah, do you want to do your head close up there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So bases, a lot of times people instinctively want to apply this with fingers out to the side, but we don't have nearly as much control that way because we don't have the paddles of our hands to help balance. So really, your tendency is probably going to be to go out towards the hips, out around the hips, but try to keep your fingers a little more close to parallel, and that will give you a lot more control to balance this and make the fire feel uh, a lot safer as well. So do you want to turn this side? You're fine. So the mount there, I'm trying to keep my hips open as I come into this, just as we would in front plank on feet. Uh, and I just had to straddle to make that possible. And then once we get into this uh, front plank on hands, we're gonna do a little range of motion with twists. And then if the base can tap the flyer's shoulder across their body. We're going to look at bringing one foot to the opposite shoulder as we rotate. Yeah, just do hands to start with because um, it can be a little tricky if you haven't done this exercise before. But if you feel good with rotating with just hands, then start adding one foot at a time as well. Base is making sure that we're extending through the shoulders to get more rotation as we extend. Um, can I have a thumbs up if we've already done front plank on hands? This is an exercise that we're familiar with. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Prove it. Three, two, one, your turn. Next, what we're going to do is a dragon lever. 
Dragon Lever, what we're looking for is to have a really good foundation on the connection point between the base's shins and the flyer's shoulders. Uh, so we're going to try to establish that not very close to the clavicle. We're gonna let that come more on the back of the body as we reach our arms up overhead for the base's feet. We're gonna show this in a moment, but just wanna make a point that this is where we want the pressure to be, not up here. Is this one? Sure. Um, I can base it. So we can enter this a number of ways. I like to have the flyer sitting on the forearms across their thighs. And then the flyer is going to establish their grip all the way on the back of the base's heel. The shoulders want to get as high to the ankle as possible. And then we can come into a tuck. The base is going to bend the knees to protect their knees from hyperextension. And then we can support the flyer's hips as we come into balance here. As the flyer feels like they have a strong enough pull, we can start to release the hips and the flyer can start to extend out as they lower into their dragon or move toward an inversion. Simple as that. And, um, and one of the things we wanna make sure is, is that the base's feet are quite strong. And so if we, our feet are connected to our flyer's arms, and we push really strong with our toes, we're gonna disconnect our flyer's hands from our grip on the foot. So I wanna make sure that if I'm pushing, I'm pushing through the center of my foot and through the ball of the foot, not through the toes themselves. So just making sure that I'm giving support without disconnecting my flyer's grip. With that same connection, it's really important as a base not to, not to curl your toes. The forearm skin is quite tender there. You dig your in, so just relax the toes in this position. Um, any questions there? Nice. These are good quick rounds, so uh, you know we can try to get through a decent amount of content in a short amount of time. Three, two, one, and here. We're gonna look at taking the same grip, going into an inversion, and then let's take a look at a few different outcomes moving toward one, but we're going to start off with one that just gets the flyer comfortable going upside down, and even just landing on the ground next to the base's hips will be our first variation. Can I show the ground first? Yeah, show to the ground first, and then I'll fly one that's going to stall, and then you fly one that faces up. So they'll take the grip, Everything's a nice, tight, tough ball here. Sam's going to go all the way upside down and continue going, but just landing on the ground next to the base's hips. So this way we know that we have control through the transition, through the part that has the greatest potential for hazard, and comes to the ground safely. And so everyone should at least establish that as the baseline so that we know that we can start to play with different things from there. Um, for those that want to play with a little bit of a flex, you know, like Matt and Rachel. I also enjoy that, where you can come toward your inversion and see about maybe coming just to a stall right here and then to the ground. And then if you can move in that general direction, you can start to move into a place where this will slowly lower into a front plank on hands. And the two methods that we're going to look at for this is one that stays open, where the flyer is exposed to the front side of the body as they're coming down. So very similar to the one that I just demoed, but this one actually comes all the way to the front plank on hands. And then if it feels a little bit challenging to open up that soon, we can do one where we stay in a much tighter ball. And muscularly, this should be more accessible for those that are having a hard time laid out fully. So we'll show those last two again. One that is laid out, that goes to the front plank on hands, and one that goes more tucked through the transition to the front plank on hands. This one being the laid out. The shoulders are established, the grip is established, the inversion is established, and on the way down, the flyer opens up the whole front side of the body, and the base catches the hips as 
the descent happens. And then the last one again. Uh, and yeah, the base can give additional support at the hips, along the back, even to the shoulders. And then as the hips are facing the ground, the base can reach through the tuck to the hips and the flyer will open at that point. No necessarily right or wrong method in doing it. There's a number of ways that we can get there, but we're gonna to try to go from that dragon lever stall, open up to a front plank on hands. Does that make sense? All right, I've had, we've had zero questions this entire time really. Uh, or maybe, sorry, we've had one, we've had one, we've had one. Um, but if you have questions, please ask. Any questions? All right. Three, two, one. Yeah, just as you're coming down, your feet are slightly ahead of your hips. So lift your feet just a little bit so that they come down after the hips. Groovy. Next one's gonna be relatively straightforward, but it does have some potential for hyperextension of the wrist of the base. And so we just wanna take a look at making sure that we can get into this pose establish where the connection between the flyer's hips and the base's hands are so that the flyer knows how to protect the base's wrists and the base knows how to help protect their own wrists. Cool? Yeah. You want to talk it? Sure. Do you want to talk? Uh, why don't you talk about your rolling technique first? Okay, so we're going to basically go from an inside star on feet to a reverse inside star on hands with base support. I already have my grip. I'm already reinforcing my own uh, landing point here. So the base lowers the flyer down. When my hips are even, then I'm going to transfer weight slowly to that other side. Open my chest up. I can use this hand to support. Yeah. And just making that transition. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm really thinking about not wanting to allow my own wrists, my own fingers to get flexed back too far. So the way I'm bracing, I, I mean, there are a variety of ways you could do it. Pick whichever one looks more comfortable for you. But I'm using this part of my hand to reinforce my knuckles this way. So watch the fact that I'm not letting my knuckles get flexed back towards me. So they're still kind of elevated. If you feel comfortable here and you want, you can take the hand away. But um, what matters is that we're not allowing too much weight to dump too quickly into the base's hand. Um, and that's why Sam's doing a really good job of bracing against this arm and slowing her own rotational momentum into my hand. And when you establish control there, we'll want to do just a little bit of range of motion the same way we did with front plank on hands with the base bringing their leg across to tap the shoulder. So once I'm stable here, I feel comfortable. I can begin that range of motion. See how far I can go. See if I can tap the shoulder. Focus more on the hand connection rather than the foot. Let the foot be secondary. Any questions? Cool. So, is that, a, is that a question there? Oh, yeah, Matt? Does it matter which hand I hold with? We want to end up in a reverse inside star. So, what Chris had established was that the primary hand establishes the reverse inside star, and the secondary hand supports that hand. Make sense? Okay, so thumb to the flyer's hat. Correct. Um, yeah. If you start in an inside star and the flyer rotates um, on a single axis, you'll end up there if you put your thumb in that direction. Yeah, just for clarity, here's a visual. This is an inside star because the flyer's torso is towards the center line of the base. Uh, her hip is right above that hip. And so I want to reinforce with my strongest hand first on my left side. But this is the main supporting arm. Right. Yeah. That establishes the reverse inside star on hands. The second hand is just to support it. Any other questions? Okay. Well, great. Then go kill it. Three, two, one. If you want to do this one on both sides, feel free since it's, it's a good workout for the base. Well, next what we're going to do is we're going to make a transition to this same position, but this time we're going to start 
often a front plank on hands and make that transition. So this is a this is a very coordinated effort. We're going to have a hard time really establishing who is leading and following because the flyer is going to help initiate some rotation, but the base is really right on top of that with them. So this is a co-created transition where we're trying to establish from a front plank and then as the flyer rotates, the base is gonna turn to support their own hand as the flyer rotates 90 degrees. That looks much better, by the way. Um, so we'll take a look at that. First, establishing a front plank on hands. And then from there, the flyer will start to um, rotate as the base pivots. And then the base will turn to support their own hand as the flyer stacks one hip on top of the other. There's a moment during that transition where the flyer has the arm crossed on the base's opposite arm. And so there's a moment that ideally we can find a bit of weightlessness in this transition that the flyer can start to shift the hand in that part of the rotation. And you can see Sam even has one arm that uh, was already established on the arm that the second arm is moving to and just braces off of one to shift the hand. Show that again. Yeah, and then uh, I, this is kind of, uh, depending on how strong your mono side star on hands is, this can be kind of difficult uh, because there is a moment where all of her weight is, there's a little bit in my other arm, but 95% of it's in this arm. So I'm with deliberate speed moving this arm to this one to support this. This is where our practice of keeping engagement through the knuckles and not allowing ourselves to get into this vulnerable position here is really important because I, I don't want to, as I call it, hail Mary my hand over and by trying to catch as we're crumpling and falling. I want to think about uh, pushing up through and being strong for that moment while, I'm, while we are transitioning my hand slowly to reinforce my, my uh, primary hand. And there's kind of two things we do to slow the momentum down and decrease the speed so that we don't overpower his one arm. One, Chris is rotating us first so we don't rotate as we roll. And then I'm pushing into his other arm so that there's still some weight in it as he moves the supporting hand to the main arm. And then just establish so that you can switch your arm to the second yeah. arm. Clear? Let us know if you need to see it again or if you have any questions. Okay, we'll look at it one more time. Any questions, anyone? Cool. So the order of operations, here's our bird, we're nice and stable. I'm finding a little bit of rotation first so that we don't have to have rotation momentum as we're making this transition. And then she's initiating rotation into her hip there. And I'm thinking about being really strong in my left arm, my primary arm, and getting my supporting hand to my other hand pretty soon. Any questions? Rad. All right. Give it a shot. Three, two, one. So we're going to take this into a further rotation, further rotation, further rotation, further rotation, right? So what we're going to do now is establish an anchor as we bring a foot across for the flyer to hold on to. And we're going to use that anchor as a vehicle to help a rotation onto the base's other foot. Um, from the base's hands. So nice and slowly, we establish that front plank position. We rotate it into our side star position. And then the brace brings the opposite foot across and the flyer is gonna hold on to that with their arms and they're gonna have a pulling motion as they pull up on the arms and bring the hips across to the foot at the same time. Um, will you turn to have your right side face the screen? Perfect. So I'm getting nice and stable here, offering the foot. That's an external rotation. Looking for the hip. If necessary, I can grab this leg. While it might not seem like much of a big deal, sometimes these grips make huge differences. And so 
establishing a grip where we have our arms on the blade edge of the base's foot pliers is how we're going to get the appropriate pull as we're making that transition. Yeah. So the, the first part is just the same as we did in the last drill. Okay. I am, this top hand is coming across, this bottom one is the one that's giving me the pull. And now I'm thinking about that cartwheel plane where I kind of am looking up at the ceiling, my feet go towards the ceiling, and I'm now in a side step. Yeah. And this one can go pretty fast uh, once you're really comfortable with it. Um, be prepared for it to go fast and, and have an escape plan. So it's a little faster. It can be a little swoopy, right? And so if you're not intending that, it might be a little a little of a surprise. But it can look more like a little more like that, a little more dynamic, right? Um, so maybe if the weight's not quite centered on the foot, because it is kind of a weird approach angle for the base's receding foot. Just be prepared for you know things to happen a little quickly. Any questions there? Um, yes, Matt. On that dynamic one, it sure looked like she grabbed the anchor leg before you even transitioned the support handover. Is that something we can use? Um, you can. It will make it go faster. If you go to the side star first and actually establish the side star, then you can rotate in control. If you go directly from the front plank on hands to grabbing the support leg, then that's where you just move through a side star quite quickly. Um, and so you'll have a lot of momentum. Um, and then Matt, you don't need your second hand on that hip ever. It is there to protect your wrist, but it is not a function of this transition. Yeah. You might, yeah, it might be useful for now. What we're going to do now is, I feel like we've, we've been doing a little bit of pulling. Let's practice our push. So we'll establish a biceps and feet just as a warm up. So you can do this with a little bit of support at the shoulders if you need that for the balance. And then for those of us that feel like we need a little bit more, we can do these in presses up and down to feel like, all right, I'm gonna get my workout in. So. You wanna, you wanna yeah, so we'll look at one that has shoulder support. So if biceps and feet is a little foreign for you, or if it feels like uh, I'm a little tired today or right now, we can support with the bases, hands at the shoulders, and it's a modified shoulder stand. And then as the flyer pushes well enough through it to move themselves away from the bases hands, they move away from the base's hands as opposed to the base just taking the arms away from the flyer. So that's a just fine method. Let's take a look at that one one more time. So it's essentially a shoulder stand supported and then the flyer lifts away from the base's hands. Alternatively, we can take that into just a mount without the base's arms supporting and so the base can give positive pressure through the flyer's arms right from the beginning and the flyer pushes down into that and extends from it. And I'm pulling my arms towards the front of the base's shins to give myself a lot of control here. I'm really pushing it to these things. And then do you press? Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't quite as big as yours, but uh, no, that's a jump. Oh oh you mean yeah. 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 we can do it. Yeah, so I like this with the base's legs straight, and then the flyer can just press, pushing down through the arms to press the legs up, and then the legs are going to slowly skin all the way back down, establishing the pike to the ground, and you can practice your press up and down that way. And so through a shoulder supported, a jump mount or a press mount, we're looking at biceps and feet. Choose your path. Choose it well and make sure that you don't take just the one that's the easiest. Make sure that you are working through some challenge. And that first one of pressing away from the base's arms and the supported, supported shoulder stand version is plenty of work. So feel like that is just fine to do. Any questions? Yeah, I don't know if anyone uh, heard Sam's small comment to me, but she, when she wanted to press, she asked for me to keep my legs straight on a turtle base, so like bending my legs. 
uh, but you know, <laughs> in order for her to be able to press, I need to give her something for her to be able to press into. So if you want to go that route, I do recommend it and trying it. Basically, keep going straight. Flyers, thank you. All right, give me your shot. Three, two, one. Um, what would be um, a progression to be able to press or what muscle do I need to think to engage to be able to do the press? Um, so the nice thing is, is the shoulder connected to the base's hands is how you can establish your press. Because the base doesn't have to have their legs completely straight then and they can bend the knees such that you can still feel the pressure of what musculature you're going to need for it. And you're looking at turning on this line here. The triceps to the lats is going to be the big line that you're using. You're going to, of course, be also then using the deltoid in the front of the pectoral for that press, but you're going to get a lot of your press through these muscles here. And so with the establishment of the hands connected to the shoulders where everything is um, nice and low for that balance, we want you as a flyer to be pushing away from the base's arms, and those will be the same muscles you're using when you are pressing. Um, going into the inversion to the biceps and letting your legs come down nice and slowly. Sam did a really great job of keeping the hips right over the shoulders so that it's not a counterbalance, but they're right over top of each other. So as the legs come down, that is also establishing the negative, which is the same musculature that you're going to use, of course, an opposite on the way up. So all of those will train you. And this press is very similar to so many presses in acro. So every time you're coming to the ground from a star, from a reverse star, from a bicep stand, if you can think about coming down as slowly and as controlled and quietly as possible, that will help train that reverse press every single time. All right, next. Yeah. So we're going to look at combining these last couple of pieces. And then in the, or starting in the reverse inside star, and then using the shoulder to enhance connection to transition up to biceps and feet. Look at that again. Yeah, and we were doing this, oh no, this is actually where we can't remember. Yeah. So I'm going to first establish the arm foot grip with my free arm. Sort of similar to a crop grip, the bicep grip. I'm bending my knee as I'm bringing her into my hands. And I'm going to try and think about a bicep stand already and really put a lot of weight into the leg. But we have the arm support so Chris can free his other leg to put it in and then press into the bicep stand. Cool. What's your piece on? Um, and are you doing one without the shoulder support? Just me. Yeah. Um, there may be a few of us that feel like we want to continue to practice our press. If you are going to continue practicing that press, the way Sam just did it is the way I prefer, where we're not transitioning through a croc, but that is an option. You can transition more through a croc and establish that bicep and arm connection. But if you can, like, uh, like Sam was just showing, that you establish not only your reverse inside star, the biceps and foot connection comes in and recoils right off of that. And then the base sneaks the foot into the second bicep, extends from there as the flyer holds shape. And essentially, it's not completely a one arm biceps and foot, but it will definitely feel that way for the flyer for a moment there. <laughs> so again, through shoulder and hand support initially, making sure that we've established uh, redundant support so that this doesn't feel like we're gonna dislocate a flyer's shoulder or a flyer doesn't know that they have the ability to stabilize themselves in that moment. And then if you wanna start playing it with it after we've gone through it with support, you can then start to play with, what does this look like going through a croc or eliminating the croc and being able to press right from the beginning into those biceps and go from our reverse inside star to biceps on feet. Simple is complicated. <laughs> Any questions? All right. Yeah, lots, 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 lots. Oh, yeah. uh, in the bicep stand, basically the flyer keep the shoulders at the same level than the elbows when he's push, when she's pushing. 
very few people are going to push the shoulders all the way to the elbows. But if you can press to where the shoulders and the elbows are at the same height, great. If you can press that the shoulders are higher than the elbows, great. If you've gone lower where the shoulders are lower than the elbows, it's a different level of complication. But as long as you still have a grip, no problem with it. Got you. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Three, two, one. All right, give it your last attempt and come in. Um, yeah, Rachel. Hi. Um, I have a question. My entrance into bicep stand is a lot stronger from croc than from anything else. And I feel like there's some mechanic that I'm missing um, in the jump in or something. I don't know. Like what, like do you, when you enter in those different ways, do you feel like Crocs or I don't know? Um, why don't you, uh, if you could stay after class for a minute, we'll have a talk with you. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to see the principal. Um, we're about out of time, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to just do a visual demonstration. I know, I know. For those of you that feel really sad about it, we have an advanced class in a few hours. You're welcome to come join us for that. Um, or we have another intermediate class tomorrow night if you would like to um, play with that. Or I guess I do with Emily. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to show, we have all the pieces, so we'll show it in sequence. Um, we're not going to spend time for y'all to do it. We're going to do a, a demo and then we'll do a wrap up and a thank you and then uh, make ourselves available to answer questions. So okay. looking at the pieces. The only piece we didn't show yet is getting from the biceps back to the beginning. So I'll do that first just so you can see it. But starting in the biceps, I'm going to press through to this uh, thighs on forearms. We establish the flip. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep. Sometimes hips move. Let's see where we're uh, start at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So from biceps and feet, flyer pikes through the legs, base catches back the knees. We go hamstring to forearms, flyer reaches overhead establishes forearms on feet and then to the front plank on hands. That then rotates into the side star on hands, cartwheels to the side star on foot, reestablishes the biceps and feet, and then we start again. So not only a really fun sequence that gets to work a push, a pull, a rotation, a press, some levers, all kinds of things. And there are plenty of opportunities to refine this. There's a lot of things that we did that have the ability to have a lot of support and then start to take those supports away as we get greater calibrated and, um, and train these very specific moves. Uh, throughout the week and in general. If you have questions, please reach out. We're happy to give a uh, diagnosis to videos that you create or answer questions as you're going through any of this. We want to see our practices grow and succeed in this, so please don't feel like you have to work between classes in a vacuum. Do feel like you have support that you can reach out to. We're happy to give it. Um, uh, really grateful for you participating in this. This is the first one that we've done on this platform. We're really excited to be here. So thank you so much for supporting it. It's really great to have another time slot. Thank you so much for Sam and Chris being here and uh, helping out with this time slot and making it so that we have a lot of resources available for everyone. So, you know, tell your friends, tell their friends, and then tell their friends' friends, and maybe even their parents, and uh, come and join us next week. But thank you all, again, so much for participating in this. Let us know if you have questions. And we're really excited to create more and more content for the weeks to come. Um, again, thank you both. Take a moment thank to you thank much. your bases, thank your flyers, um, thank your spotters when they will arrive again. Whenever you thank see you, them. Thank you, Rox. Uh, and again, do reach out. Let us know if you have questions. We are happy, happy, happy to answer them. Thank um, you all. Yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um,
All right, Matt and Rachel, let's see, um, let's see you go from the ground. Just press in. Uh, let's see that again. And I'm going to look to bring your thumb just another quarter to a half inch around the front side of the shin. In the front? Okay. Yep. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, right there. Right about there? Okay. Yep. Great. That looked good. <laughs> that was better. Not bad for not breathing. Yeah, I never breathe in my set stand, which I think might be half the problem. <laughs> or like 90% of it. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to remember. Um, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, thumb wrap, breath um, would be the things that look good. Uh, on top of that, you are in a straight body position with your legs together, which will be the most complicated of balance. Open yeah. straddle will help that a little bit, and a tuck can help that also. So you can play with different leg positions and see if that helps you establish longer balance that feels more secure. Okay. You can froggy your legs as well. Froggy, okay. Yeah, I do hit the ceiling with this guy. Okay.